morning. Just a quick disclaimer one more time that we are recording this call and our recording will be placed on our YouTube channel. Um, if you don't want to be recorded, you may want to drop off now. And also this call is joined by our Microsoft team members as well as uh, members from our customers and partners. Okay. I hope everybody can hear me. Um, so today our topic is Azure Container Apps. Um, this has just gone into a public preview. So um, this was announced uh, and put in public preview at Ignite. Uh, that happened uh, last month. And you may want to ask like, why we need another container uh, app? Um, um, so basically, what Azure Container Apps allows you to do, it's a serverless platform. It allows you to host your container microservices. So um, there are different platforms that Microsoft has to run container-based application. The first thing that may come to your mind is, OK, why not AKS? AKS is not a serverless platform. It is very powerful. Don't get me wrong. But it is not a serverless platform. Azure Container Apps is a serverless platform. It doesn't. You don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure. You just run your app. OK, that's number one thing. Second, um, what about a Azure uh, Container Instances? That is running a single container. You have a container, you want to quickly run it. Azure Container Instance doesn't provide you auto scaling, doesn't provide you load balancing and things like that. OK. Uh, what about app service? Azure, what about Azure App Service? Azure App Service is targeted towards web applications. And um, when you go with microservices where you may have a lot of uh, microservices, that's not the target audience of uh, um, Azure App Service. Folks, I would really appreciate if you can mute yourself if you're not asking any question. So, um, so that's basically uh, kind of a differentiator and the value prop for Azure Container Apps. Um, and potentially one other powerful thing about it is since it's auto scales, it can scale to zero. So for example, if you're doing event processing and uh, there are no more events to process for a certain amount of time, it will scale to zero. And in terms of uh, kind of how it is built. It's built on the foundation. So underlying infrastructure is AKS. It's abstracted out. Um, and it's based on CADA, which is Kubernetes event driven auto scaling. And um, it has the built in capabilities, uh, you know, uh, on foundation of Dapper, which is distributed application runtime. And folks, we will have a separate section, I promise you, on Dapper. At the moment, just think of it, Dapper is uh, a kind of uh, um, a runtime that allows you to microservices to talk e to each other irrespective of the um, kind of what technology you are using. So for example, it abstracts out um, like uh, data store, uh, key storage feature, so you can plug and play different services. One from, for example, um, if you are using some services from AWS, from Azure, so that's how it allows you to build your application. So anyways, we will probably discuss it in detail, but at the moment, Azure Container App have support for Dapper as well. If you have multiple uh, microservices that you are deploying. OK, so just to move any move further, these are the type of scenario that it makes possible. Of course, public API endpoint services that are um, op kind of uh, open to web. So you have web application. Maybe there's a web application 
with a front end, then there's a back end microservice, things like that. You're doing back end processing, long running processes. That's where it comes into picture. You have event driven driven processing where events are coming up on a service bus or a storage queue. That's where you will be able to use it. Then comes the microservices. You have a number of microservices that are talking to each other. That's another scenario where you will want to use Azure Container Apps. Any questions at the moment? Okay. So moving further, let's talk about some of the concept as it relates to um, Azure Container App. So first of all is an environment. Environment is nothing but a logic grouping, logical grouping of the apps. So you have um, two, three, four apps which makes or you know uh, makes up uh, your entire application or set of application. That's where you want to use an environment. There is no cost for an environment, and it's just as, as I said, is it's just a logical grouping, a collection of container apps. Okay. Second. Um, each container app is deployed as a microservice. So basically, if you have five microservices, you have five container apps. Okay, and uh, that's that's the uh, kind of that's the relationship. Next thing is each container app can have multiple containers, and all of them will live in that particular container app. OK. There is also a concept of revision. OK, so revision is a very powerful concept. Let's say that you are constantly iterating your microservices. There are different teams. There are four microservices. There are four small micro teams which are each working on their service and they're constantly enhancing them. So what you do is you each time you to make an update and you make um, uh, kind of a, a next iteration of your microservice or container apps, it creates a new revision. So think of it, environment has container apps and each uh, container app can have multiple revisions, okay? And you can control how you send traffic to those revisions. And we will look that in the demo as well in a minute. So the point is container apps, Container have, apps have a revision, and you can direct traffic. You can say, okay, send 20% of the load to the new one, and 80% to the, or let's say 20% to Rev 2, 80% continue to go on to Rev 1. And then you can slowly change. So this is like a kind of a blue green deployment. You can definitely do that. You can disable revisions, and we will uh, look that in the demo. But that's that's the concept, and that's built in. You don't have to do anything. It is built in as a part of container apps. Okay. So this is kind of a life cycle. Um, and as I said, once uh, a revision is no longer needed, you can disable it and um, that's all. And that's, it is like if you have ingress traffic coming in, you can redirect it. You can say 80% goes to revision one, and 20% goes to revision two. Okay, it's a demo time, so let's take a look. Um, let's get an idea like what's going on, what's all about uh, these container apps. So, okay. So first of all, I am going to go and go to a different screen. Hold on a second. Um, open a new tab. Let's start with a fresh tab so we can see what's going on. OK, let's go to container apps. As you can see, I'm playing around with it a little bit. So I have a few container apps deployed. So let's create a new container apps. Once again, we are going to go to a GUI experience since it's easier to demo. Just keep in mind the support for CLI and PowerShell is also available. And actually, there are more options there. So if you look at the CLI and Power Apps, they, are, they have more options in terms of what you can do. So just want to give you a heads up. Okay, I'm going to pick a resource group. This is my container apps resource group. And 
uh, I'm going to name it NZAPL demo. OK, container app demo. This is my environment. If I want to create a new one, I can create a new environment. So this will tell me, OK, where you where we want to create it. Canada Central. So these are where that public preview is available. Otherwise, for this demo, I'm going to use the existing environment. Next is the app setting. So what I can do is if I'm just playing around with it, I can use a quick start image, you know, and it's a simple hello world container. I can go with it. But I have an image that I have already deployed in um, um, Azure Container Registry, and I am going to use that image, and I'm going to name that um, the a image. And this is my container registry. And uh, so this is my container image. Let me just double check. Yes, that's the image. I'm going to select a tag. So these are different tags. I'm going to select the latest tag. A OS type is Linux. I don't care about the command. And these are the different sizes. So these are different sizes which are available. I'm going to pick the smallest one. And it asks you, do you want to enable ingress or do you want to not enable the ingress? So that's on you if you want to enable it or disable it. I want to enable ingress. Internal only. Internal only means that only apps in your environment will be able to communicate to it. So you may have a HTTP based microservice, but only apps in your uh, container apps in your environment can talk to it but i want something that anybody can talk to so i'm gonna call it um okay let's talk on port 80 with that that's all i want to do and i am going to create that so it will start deployment and it's gonna deploy the microservice it takes um a minute for the microservice to deploy and once that is deployed we will take a look at it so in the meantime what it's going what it's basically doing is it's taking that container that i have in my azure container registry it's taking that and it is using that container to deploy it into uh, my container apps uh, so that's that's what's um, going on so let's see okay very quick, as you can see, it did not take any time. This is deployed. So before we take a look at it, let's look at different uh, parts and pieces of it. So first of all, overview container apps. This is the application URL. And if we uh, what what we're going to do is um, we are going to click on that URL. And as you can see, this is what I have. Say hello to Azure Power Lunch. Say hello to um, container apps. And if you can, first of all, I want you to look at the URL construction. So this is the name that we gave. This is a unique name that it generates. OK, and this is the. Uh, region and then, of course, Azure Container Apps dot IO. That's the um, kind of a uh, postfix or. Or yeah, suffix, so that's what it uses for uh, this particular app, OK? So that app is running. Let's look at different pieces. Secrets, so if you have some keys and things like that, so I have a key here, which is the, um, you know, the password of the container app ACR. That's what it's using here. And then ingress, uh, that's how I'm enabling ingress. Continuous deployment. I can potentially set up continuous deployment based on a GitHub account. I'm not doing that right now. That's advisable. Um, you know, if you're doing kind of a real world application. OK, that's the revision part. So as you can see, I have a revision running here, which is a, um, only one revision that is active 100% traffic going to it. Let's see what are the different parts and pieces of the revision. OK. You have um, overview right now. I'm running one replica, 100% traffic going there. And as you can see, revision itself has a different URL. If you have played with app service and app service slots, it's kind of 
like that, but there is a unique name assigned to it, as you can see here. Hopefully you can see. Let me just increase the font size a little bit so everybody can see it. Look, this is the this is the URL. Okay. By the way, any questions? Okay. Next thing is what is the container? So you can um, basically go in and um, and by the way, every revision is immutable. You cannot change a revision. That is very important. That's why you you see here, I cannot change anything. Okay. If you want to create a new up, make an update, you have to create a new revision. So let's say that we want to go to the next version. Let's create a new revision. I'm going to create a new revision. I'm going to go in here. Um, um, and uh, basically, I'm going to call it V2. And I am going to use a new image. I'm going to use the latest three image, save it. And for scaling, I'm just going to say one replica, one to 10. That's all. And that's very important rule. Um, you can pick up different rule. You can do HTTP scaling. You can do Azure queue based scaling. You can do custom scaling. That's basically where Keda comes into picture. OK, so that's how you can scale your app. But let's not worry about it. In this scenario, we are just creating um, the new revision. Dapper, I don't want to spend too much time on it uh, because you know probably um, an introduction to Dapper. If you have multiple microservices and you want those microservices accessible to each other using the Dapper API and you're using those Dapper API in your application, you want to enable Dapper in your application. Okay. Other than that, um, just keep it disabled. So in this one, we're just seeing revision. So let's do a create a new revision and let's see what it is doing. It's gonna it's provisioning it. Let's wait for a second. And by the way, if you don't give any, um, I mean, prefix, it will automatically assign something. Otherwise, uh, as I said, I said B2, it's assigned B2 here. So let's give it a second. Let it come up. OK, it's provision, so let's see what is this new revision uh, doing. Uh, let's click on the application URL. And as you can see, this says say hello to uh, Rev1. OK, so now if we go to the app in this particular app and if we click on the browser URL, you see this is now going all traffic to the second revision. You know, there are two revisions, so this is the new revision all traffic going to. Let's uh, do something here. Let's come in here and split the traffic 50-50. So we come in here and we split the traffic 50-50. We save it. And it will take a second to save it. And once that is done, we will go back to that URL. So let's copy that URL and OK, that is saved. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new incognito window just to be sure we are not saving any state. So as we click on this window, give it a second. Come on. So this is basically the first revision. Let's refresh it one more time. Let's keep refreshing it. As you can see, it will keep switching between one rev and the 50% traffic. This is so basically without doing writing a single line of code or messing with the load balancer, we are able to split traffic between the two instances. You know, two revisions, and okay, so everybody um, good with, good with that. So now let's take the last uh, one one other thing, which is auto scaling. Okay, so for that example, I have created an app which is a queue reader. So basically, I am using one of the samples. This is a Microsoft image. 
and it has a queue reader sample. OK, I'm using that. I have deployed that app. In. Um, in um, in uh, Azure Container Apps, and it's basically what this app does is it doesn't have a front end or anything. It's a headless app. The only thing it is doing is event driven, so it's reading a queue. This is the app queue name it reads, um, and when it there is a message arrive in a queue, it tries to process it. Look at this part. This is the auto scaling part. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm saying the min replica is one. I could have set it to zero. In that case, it will basically drop down to zero. And I'm, then I'm creating a rule. I'm saying for app queue, if you have more than five messages, add another replica. So basically, this is as soon as if there are five messages, add another replica, add another replica. So that's how I'm asking it to auto scale. And once the that thing ends, it will scale down back to its original uh, size, the minimum replica size of one. Once again, as I said, I could have done it to zero where there is no replica running. So in in that case, I'm not paying any money when there is no message being processed. OK, so this is the app that I have here. So let me just close this window, go back to my container apps. This is the uh, this is the curator demo app. I have only one revision. Give it a second. Come on. For some reason, it knows it's a demo, so it's gonna start slowing down. Okay, so let me. Container apps. Hmm, something is not right. Let me see if uh, my internet is working. Hmm, so it's working. Why? Maybe it's a sign in issue. Let's try this. Sign in again. Okay. Let me go to um, Azure. Search for Azure updates. I'm just want to see if there is no. I mean, so everything is fine. I think this is something with this. Um, it, for some reason. Yeah, OK, perfect. Uh, so we are here. So it took a second, but. Yes, so let's go to this revision. As you can see here, there is one replica. OK, just keep an eye here. This part of the screen. OK, we have one replica. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a process which will fill the queue. So this is the. Um, storage queue writer that I have. And actually, let me move it off the screen here so you can see uh, the size going up. So I'm going to run this. So this process is running. This is filling up the queue. OK, and I'm going to refresh the screen. And in a kind of a minute, you will see that it will start increasing the number of replica because what's happening is um, messages are being flooded into the queue, and if with a single instance, it will not be able to process those messages. And as you can see now, we are already to four replica. Okay, so this is basically this auto scaling rule that is coming into picture and saying, okay, you know, there are so many messages, I need to scale up to process those messages. And that's how um, it's um, kind of doing the processing. So all of it being done um, with, without with just some kind of uh, what we call uh, through configuration without 
you know, kind of removing, adding any infrastructure. So once again, one, if you can, I mean, a number of things you can do here, can, you can do in AKS as well, but AKS have great power, but at the same time, a lot of knobs to manage. In here, you have, I mean, if you have, if you're starting with microservices, that is a good start because you can do a lot of stuff um, without worrying about the underlying infrastructure, without managing those knobs. So as you can see here, this is running and it's up to 10 now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill that process behind the scene. I killed it. OK, and after some time it will come back to one. And by the way, the, there's a cooling off period, so it may not happen during the session, but it will come down. OK, so let's go back to the slide. Any questions at the moment? Yes. Nothing has been shown so far in the week. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, in regards to Dapper, as I said, we will definitely um, cover it in the future, some of the future session. You have a lot of capabilities. Um, as I said before, Dapper distributed application runtime, abstract our out, how you do state management, how you to observability secrets and things like that so you can plug and play services so the same way it kind of it has full support it allows you to uh, talk to microservices in that environment over mtls you know support for mtls things like that and by the way i promise you we will do a different session on specifically on dapper this is a very important topic okay this is kind of a high level environment if you're running an app that's how you have the dapper sidecar running and that is kind of uh, doing all the all the support for Dapper. And finally, there at the moment there is built-in support available in API management to import container app services. So you know, just to be aware. And with that, this is kind of um, some. Um, links to useful resources. So that's all I have. By the way, I have slides in there and um, which are um, kind of a covered dapper as well as Keda. So please take a look at that. There are, uh, you know, in the appendix, I have a Keda primer. And by the way, uh, one of the, my Microsoft colleagues put that back and I just kind of borrowed it. So, uh, yeah, so that uh, I'm just reusing some content, but there is content on Keda as well as Dapper in the slide deck. So I will um, upload the slide deck with our presentation just as we do. So, you know, please uh, feel free to take a look at it. And, um, you know, um, hope, I hope you find useful. Any other question? I know we are right on time. OK. So um, there are no questions. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining the Azure Power Lunch. And hope to see everybody uh, next week for another session of Azure Power Lunch. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe, folks.